Hey everybody, this is Akrazet. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the game Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons or Oracle of Ages, but in some of the dungeons there was this really cool mini game where you would have to color, you'd be, it'd be a room full of squares and there'd be some obstacles that you had to go around and you had to color each one of the squares but you could only go forward or you could only move from the last square that you colored and you had to color all the squares in the room so that a, a chest would drop and you can get a small key and move forward. So I was thinking that we could take the swipe puzzle tutorial, the swipe puzzle game that we made together and make a few tweaks and then make a, a whole nother game in that in that style so here it is I go I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to make that game by making a few small tweaks and I hope you really enjoy it so let's go ahead and let's jump into it okay so I wanted us all to be able to do this tutorial together so if you want to follow along then definitely download the BB doc that's in the description of this video the start lesson BB doc and then if you also want to go and check out my old tutorial with the swipe puzzle tutorial that shows you how I made this this BB doc then definitely follow my tutorial and check that out and I'll include links to those parts as well and then let's go ahead and let's follow along and let's get started so first things first let's go ahead and change the way that the main character moves because right now it's sliding across the floor and we don't want that and the way we're gonna change it is we're gonna use a jump node we are gonna use a jump node but we're also gonna use a position animate animation node Okay, position, animation, all right. And then the way we're gonna hook this up, we'll set it up so that it jumps up five. We'll do five in the Y, zero, zero, five, and then zero. And I think our gravity right now is set to negative 60, but let's go ahead, let's go to our 3D world. Let's set the gravity to negative 30, just while it's on my mind right now and then let's go back to our main character okay the jump is only going to go up five and let's do zero in the y for the angular force let's look up the position animation as well all right and for up we want to go negative two so that's going to go away from us and we'll do zero in the y we'll do a duration of point let's do point one seconds and then we'll do linear and then we'll also uh change the scale of the collision shape to just one. It doesn't need to be uh, big like it was for the other game. So we've got the collision shapes and then let's just take a quick look at that and see how that looks. Okay, we'll swipe up. All right, perfect. And then jumps up there. It kind of hops and, and slides, uh, slides up one position. Okay, that's perfect. Now, let's go ahead and do that for the others. So we'll put this up at the top since this is going to be up and then I'll hit S on my keyboard and copy it below and we'll hook it up so that it is going to go down the new copies and we'll do instead of negative two we'll do positive two and then we'll copy this okay great and we'll hook this up so this is gonna go left alright perfect and then we're going to go zero in the Z and we're gonna go negative two in the X. All right, perfect. And then last one. Okay, cool. And we'll hook it up so that we can use the keyboard buttons as well so that we can play it on our computer. All right, perfect. And this is the last one and it's gonna to go to the right. So it's gonna go positive two. All right, perfect. Now let's hook this up so that it goes when it's pressed. We do the jumps here, jump up. And then we're gonna go jump down, jump to left, and then jump and move right. Okay, so we've got that, all that done. Okay, perfect. Now the next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need to do uh, a defeated animation because we're gonna make it so that, uh, oops, sorry, defeat. We'll do it if collide. We're gonna make it so that we cannot go backwards. We can only go one direction. That's part of the that's part of the the puzzle. Uh, a debris. We're gonna need a if collide a debris explosion. We'll need a delay. We'll need an event delay. We'll need an event. Okay, great, perfect, awesome. Now let's hook this up here, 
and we'll make it so that the affected asset is enemy. And we're also going to do the scale as 1.1, 1.1, 1 .1, and 1.1. And it needs to be just a little bit bigger than the rest of the collision shapes so that it registers the collision really easily and, and we don't have any problems there. Okay, we're gonna hook up this debris explosion, hook up this delay, hook it up just like I'm doing, and then it's gonna be game over, and we're gonna call this game over. Okay, awesome. And then let's go ahead, let's go into our mind map now. Let's make a, let's make another one of these, another UI. So, and we'll call this, we'll call this game over UI. UI screen, I'll get rid of the screen. We'll use that in just a little bit. And then we're gonna add another UI. I'm just gonna right click here in the empty space and then I'm gonna add a UI. And then we're gonna, we're gonna just call this world one UI. World one, perfect. And then we'll call this world one because we're gonna make a second world. I'm gonna show you how I go about making new worlds as well. And let's go ahead, go in here, add the event observer, call this game over, perfect and then great and then we'll go over here to our mind map again and once game over game over happens we're going to go over to the game over ui we'll change this to be game over game over instead okay great and then we'll be able to start the game back over and you know what i think we can actually just change the uh the function here to be restart and that way it'll restart the level perfect Okay, great, that looks really, really clean. Okay, this one, now we're gonna uh, keep um, keep working on this first world and then we'll add a second world um, in a little bit. But now we've got that game over event taken care of. So here we go. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need some debris for the debris explosion. So we'll go to the asset library, we'll click on this and this is going to be, we're gonna just name this debris, okay. We'll go into the main character node map. We'll go to the defeat explosion. We'll add it here. We'll just assign debris. Okay, sorry if I'm moving fast. Um, and then we're gonna do 40 total on the scale for the uh, objects. And we're gonna do about 40 on the Y and the linear velocity. Let's do actually just do 30 on the total. Um, and then we'll do linear velocity 40 in the Y because gravity is pushing down so hard we need to have a, hard, a high force going up if we want to have an explosion. Okay, and then let's go to world one and we're also going to, we're gonna need a, kind of a special type of flooring uh, or we're gonna need a special node that I created for the, for the floor. So I'm going to bring in a floor BB asset and I'm going to include the download link to the floor BB asset in the description of this video. So go ahead and download it and then do as I'm doing right now and bring it into the game. And then we're gonna, we're gonna I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, we're gonna call this Zach's floor right now just so that we don't get it confused because there's two of them named floor right now. And then you'll notice that we also added a floor replacement, okay? And that came stock with the, uh, that came stock with my Zach's floor. So let's go ahead, let's just take the old, uh, the old floor replacement and just delete it, okay? So yeah, we'll go ahead and delete that item. Now, the next thing right here I wanna show you is we're using a special spawn node that inherits the color of the object that spawns it. Normally you only see this inherent color attribute on the debris explosion node, but I did some coding and I added it there. So if you'd like to use this spawn node for other, other projects, then feel free to take this BB asset and run with it. Um, but let's go ahead, let's, I'm gonna show you how to set up this floor. So um, go, to, go here to go to the regular floor. Okay, unhook these guys. All right, we're gonna use the we're gonna use some of these uh, nodes here. So let's go ahead and hold on to them. But we need an if collide. Perfect. And then we'll set it up so that if collide with main character. And we're gonna go ahead and actually rename this main character one right now, just so that we because we're gonna have another main character two for our, our next world. All right, now we're gonna go back to floor. We're gonna have it set to main character one, perfect. We're gonna set the color to orange. We are going to get rid of this spawn node. 
go to Zach's floor, grab the, the new spawn node that I created, copy and paste it in there. Perfect, and it's already got the floor replacement already hooked up for us, so you don't have to worry about that. But normally you would press this edit button, select floor replacement, and that's gonna be the asset that's assigned. Okay, now that looks good. Um, now let's go ahead and let's set up an enemy. We need to go to world one. We need to set up an enemy to spawn behind us so that every time we move forward, we can't move back. So I'm gonna go to the asset library. I'm going to select sphere. I'm gonna name it enemy. And this is also really important. We need to put it in the enemy collision group. And I'm gonna make it static. And I'm gonna change it to pink for now, but we're gonna make it invisible pretty soon. And let's go to our main character. And now we're gonna start spawning, spawning enemies right behind us as we are moving across the floor. So at the end of the position animation, we are going to spawn an enemy, perfect and assign it and then we're going to want to put it so we want to put it behind us so if we're moving forward uh, to uh, in the Z the, uh, or negative let's see here this is actually this one is the bottom one this is moving right so we're moving positive 2 in the X so we need to go negative 2.5 in the X to go the opposite direction, and then we're gonna do negative Y as well, just kind of sink it in. Okay, great, that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the next one. I'm gonna hit W on my keyboard to copy it, and then we're gonna do positive 2.5 now. Then I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna hit W again, copy it, and I'll hook it up to the downward movement that we're gonna have here, and that is going to be zero for the X, and it should be a believe negative 2.5 I think negative 2.5 for this one because it's positive Z yes yeah, so it's negative 2.5 for the Z okay great and then the last one I'll make another copy with W hook it up to the moving upwards and then we're gonna make it positive and move it back behind us okay great so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's quickly let's save our game so I'm gonna save it as I'm gonna call this Legend of Zelda, let's erase this. I'm gonna call it Legend of Zelda Dungeon Puzzle. Dungeon Puzzle, yeah. All right, awesome, I love it. I love this game so much. I hope you really, uh, you all really enjoy it as well. And let me, let me just check on the collision shape here on our character. Let's see here, go to our main character, check the collision shape real fast. Oh, you know what? I want to do put it in position 1 and then 1 and 1. Okay, great. Check the collision shape. Looks good. Looks good. Let's do the start Let's do the if collide with floor. Let's maybe do that one a little bit bigger as well. We'll do 1.05 1.05 1.05 1.05 Okay, and that's on the collision shape. All right, let's make sure, let's see if that's working. So we'll press play. Okay, nice, all right. And you know what? It seems like the jump is actually going a little bit high. So let's, let's lower the jump to, let's go to our main character, let's lower the jump to actually three three each time sorry about that everybody okay so let's see it now perfect and yeah that looks good okay and so every single time now uh, when we move it hops I love that and then when we try to go back it ex it's an explosion and then you can press play and start over. Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end this first video here. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to turn those enemies invisible and how to make a second world and how to go about designing that. So I'm really excited to see you in that next video and thank you so much for watching.